evening, everybody. Thank you to Rural Woman and also John from Access Home Health for your sponsorship and giving me the opportunity to be here tonight. I would like to share with you the Rangitiki Farms Day story so far. To give you a bit of background, Rangitiki Farms Day is located in the Rangitiki region, halfway between Wellington and Taupo on our 1,500-acre hill country farm. The property was purchased by the Stewart family in 1901, so Andrew and I are very fortunate to be the fourth generation to work the farm. While it was leased out from 2007 and 12, Andrew and I experienced other work areas and did extensive travel. While creating the farm today, the majority of work has been completed by Andrew and myself, both working full-time jobs. Andrew worked as a journalist and farmer, and I was a full-time PE and health teacher. Because of our busyness, in order to help create the Farms Day, we've used a number of international volunteers. Today, the Farms Day sleeps a total of 19 guests and is enjoyed by a mix of both New Zealand and international guests. We offer a large range of friendly farm animal, animals, as well as activities both on and off the farm. When moving to the farm in 2005, Andrew and I were extremely grateful. You can see the two pictures, one of the original homestead and the second of the new homestead built in the 80s. We had extensive underutilised buildings surrounding the area and it, these were filled with a lot of old relics that have helped create the farm's day today. We removed all but five trees in the existing garden. This gave us a greater opportunity to see the farm in the Markahau Valley. However, it did leave us with dirt, and I didn't know a lot about gardening, so I soon had to learn. In 2008, Andrew and I returned home from overseas. We had experienced Africa, lived in the Cayman Islands, and realised what we had back home in New Zealand was something special. During our travels, we discovered that, in fact, we wanted to open our home back home to those around the world. It was the farm wash house, which is now the East Hut, um, which was our first project. Before renovations began, unfortunately I didn't take any photos, but this old wash house was filled with junk, or old relics, from the past three generations. Today the East Hut sleeps two people and has the original bathroom attached. This was our first building, but it was soon evident that as we looked out from one window in the East Hut, we had to keep moving. The original homestead was in the backyard and had been a hay shed for the past 30 years. We began with this, and as you'll be thinking right now, our friends told us we were mad. I remember getting an electrician to come, and he told me I was mad. What on earth do you want to rewire this old thing for? It was filled with treasures, junk and rubbish from the past 20 years, but after school I would get busy. And it was soon evident that this, in fact, was going to be the making of our farm stay. It was at this point we began using international volunteers to help us create what is today our base. The Bunkhouse and Farm Museum sleeps a total of nine people, includes a party area, pool table, projector, large screen TV, as you can see, very rustic, and filled with old relics from the past generations to tell the history of the farm and area. Continuing on, we realised it was the more we could sleep, the better. The West Hut today was once a garage. It sleeps four in total now, complete with an ensuite bathroom, Sky TV, cafe style seating and breakfast bar. It is our most popular hut for families. The grounds today, even though we started with dirt and five trees, are established. They are manicured and gardening has become my hobby and passion. Our business has been built around reusing and recycling. We have not bought a lot, but we have tried to be creative and use what we had 
amongst the sheds and junk. We did find a lot of old treasures. I have to thank and acknowledge the past generations for being hoarders. <laughs> the guests we experience today are from all over the world, both young and old. It is amazing to meet the people that we do. Being a secondary school teacher, I've used my contacts, so we've used a lot of, we've had a lot of school groups, couples, families, and being able to sleep 19 has meant we are now beginning to have activities and groups like hens do. Although my husband wasn't too keen on the idea, we have a lot of animals. Every time he goes away for work, I get a new one. <laughs> Last week he went down south for the autumn muster. I got a pig. <laughs> the time before that, I got a black pet sheep. Even though we're only a recently established business, we continue to be involved in our community. We donate large numbers of accommodation vouchers for various local fundraisers. We offered free accommodation to Christchurch families affected by the earthquake. We hosted the Mel Parsons and the Bitches Box comedy show. We've given IHC groups free horse rides and visit of our visits around our animals. We've hosted a breast cancer fundraising dinner and I began the Speech Bubbles networking evening in 2011, where women gather for a glass of bubbles and get the opportunity to listen to an inspiring speaker. In 2009, as a PE and health teacher at Wanganui Girls College, I gave the opportunity to 100 of my students to come out to the farm. Many of them had never visited a farm before, and this was a great opportunity for them being a DSL 3 school. In 2010 and 11, we hosted and organised the Rangitiki Farm Stay Fate. We, here we had 20 quality stools, gourmet barbecue, and raised a substantial amount of money for both the Turakina Tennis Club and the Wanganu Girls College Stage Challenge crew. Just when we thought we were starting to quieten down, the huts were all developed but business was picking up, we thought we would busy ourselves more with the arrival of Hannah. In 2012, we took back our farm. As I mentioned earlier, it had been leased out. So once again, another challenge, restocking the farm, planting pine trees, finding new working dogs, and we were back into it. Some recent projects, we've developed a lake. We have started to mark out farm walks around the farm and we have developed a second vegetable garden for our guests to use and access. We aim to continue marking out farm tracks, creating an area for buses and large groups, continuing development around the lake such as buildings, plantings and new activities, developing an outside bath area, renovating a hut located in the middle of the farm and exploring the further options of RF products such as children's books, RF meat, water and clothing. Later this year we have also organised in conjunction with Sport Wanganui a mud muster. Some of you may have heard of the Tough and Girl and Guy Challenge. We're going to be organising and holding a similar activity with mud and obstacles around our farm. In April this year we had a mock wedding shoot and we have our first wedding booked on December the 31st. The creation of Rangitiki Farms Day has been a lot of hard work, but Andrew and I are excited about our future. Thank you for listening to our story so far.